Welcome back to LEGO Wars and Heat G of the series. Last time out we saw the seeds Zoidy Blue and King B Cubed grind down the competition to progress into our round of 16, leaving just 4 spots left to claim. This week sees two of the top performers from a recent international special start their domestic campaigns with the destructive quarterfinalists Hijinx as the 13th seed alongside the reigning international champs the 4th seed Atlas. Let's see who they will face. First, from Great Yarmouth, the number 4 seed, Atlas. The only undefeated machine going into the competition, Atlas has that bulldozing scoop that proved so effective in its recent success. From California in the USA, the number 13 seed, Hijinx. The Rusty Killer also makes its domestic debut with that potent undercutter bar to cleave through the opposition. From Bristol, Mingo. Another machine that made its debut in the last international, Mingo has those two powerful peggers to rain down the damage on the field. From Stone Market, Cassius. The legendary front hinge flipper breaks onto the scene with a slightly bizarre win in the qualifiers. Let's hope we actually see fight footage tonight. Let's kick off the action tonight with the fourth seed's Atlas take on the qualifiers Cassius. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. So two very different robots here, Atlas with the bucket scoop and the tracks, Cassius meanwhile classic wedge shape with the front hinge flipper but Atlas's bucket scoop proving to be a superior weapon here in the early stages of this fight, getting underneath Cassius, Cassius has no real answer for this, although they managed to get away there and now actually exploiting Atlas's bucket scoop. Remember the scoop is quite slow to lower down and they were able to take advantage of that, getting underneath the front. now. That will be something to watch out for later on in this heat and in this battle. Atlas, of course, seeded fourth for this competition. Seeded due to it winning the International Series earlier on this year. They beat some good robots to win that, including Panic Attack, the reigning champion. So they are a strong favourite for this series. Now coming in on the side assault on Cassius. Cassius caught there by the arena spikes and being pinned in there. So they can't get away from the spikes. Now they can. Atlas being the more aggressive on the early stages of this fight to me and they've managed to get them pinned into the side wall again bringing that lifted scoop up but Cassius is a very heavy robot and causing Atlas to overbalance there and Atlas having to reverse they could not take full advantage of that situation so do Cassius have them worried here? they could do Cassius giving them a very good fight thus far they're not the lowest at the front but they are giving them one heck of a battle. Now underneath Atlas and very nearly had them over there. That would have been a huge shock. If they could get Atlas upside down, I don't think Atlas can self-right. And now pinning Atlas against the side wall. Cassius, of course, defeated Wickmead in its qualifier. Okay, Wickmead threw itself down the pits. So not a stellar qualifier performance from Cassius. But hey, a win's a win nonetheless. And they're trying to use that front inch to a good effect. Atlas's ground clearance around the machine is quite low because of the tracks. Meanwhile, Cassius, as you can see, is that huge yawning ground clearance, which Atlas is happy to exploit. Is Atlas okay here? They seem to be having a few control issues. Well, they seem to be okay at the moment now. Getting in for a side on assault on Cassius once again, trying to exploit that high ground clearance of theirs. Nearly did so on that ascent, but again, their bucket scoop raised. They couldn't lower it in time and Cassius were able to take advantage of that. This is a really good, strong performance here from Cassius. And they're underneath Atlas again and pinning them against the sidewall. And could very well have them upside down here again on another assault. Can they do it? Can they do it? Oh, no, not quite. Atlas backing away to safety into that corner. Lowering their scoop. The arena spike stopping Cassius from getting to them now. Now they're okay, but Atlas underneath Cassius once again and lifting them into the air, but Cassius able to get away from that assault underneath Atlas. This is a really good battle here. Could well go to the judges, and if it does go to the judges, it's going to be very tight. Both robots have been aggressive. Both robots have been controlled. Atlas definitely has the more pushing power by that logic there that we just saw. They had to push Cassius across the arena, but again, being overbalanced. That is a real worry here. We are under the final 10 seconds. This is going to go to the judges and it is going to be very, very close. What an opening battle this was between two very, Six. very good machines. Well done, Cassius, for staying in there for so long. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be a judge for this one. Damn, that was close. Very close battle this one. Atlas started the strongest, of course, managing to get underneath and pluck Cassius into the air. I thought they had them there, but Cassius were able to come back. Nearly had Atlas upside down there. Goodness me, that was close. 
Atlas though using good control to try and exploit that ground clearance on Cassius. Cassius again managing to push Atlas back. Very nearly had them upside down there as well. Cassius proving to have the most pushing power. I tell you what, I honestly have no clue who's won this one. It's just so close. And the winner by unanimous decision is Atlas. After that hard-fought win, let's move on to fight two tonight between Mingo and the 13th Seeds hijinks. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. So a real power of the pink battle here. Two-headed Death Flamingo, of course, with those swinging, pecking axes. Oh, and having a wing torn off by Hijinx. Hijinx seeded 13th for this series. Of course, best known for tearing apart Rusty in the International Special earlier on this year in a battle dubbed as the War Crimes. And they've torn apart Two-headed Death Flamingo early on in this fight, though Two-headed Death Flamingo now using good speed and power to outmaneuver Hijinx. It's more of a control bot, those axes are more for show. It's better really at just being a pusher, using those front wedges, as you can see, to guide robots around and slam them around like that. That was a great attack there by Two and Death Flamingo. The axe is not, <laughs> not really doing much, but they're able to power Hijinx around and the number 13 seeds look worried here, pinned in against the side wall. Can they do it? Can they cause an upset here? Hijinx. Barely moving here and taking some damage on the top there. Is Hijinx okay? The number 13 seeds, they started strongly. They caused all that damage to Mingo, but at the moment, 2 out of Flamingo is definitely on top. And Hijinx is not moving and is being counted out. I cannot believe this. This is a huge upset as 2 out of Death Flamingo overcome the odds. And beat the seeded hijinks. That's a huge shock. What on earth happened there? We were expecting big things from hijinks after the international Seeds. special, but they didn't happen in that fight. Two out of the flamingo get three points. It started so well for hijinks, tearing off one of the wings there. Two out of the flamingo managed to get a little love tap in there, but there was no real major damage done by two out of the flamingo. More damage done by hijinks there to the other wing. But then, two of the Death Flamingo able to just slam Hijinx into that corner, and they just sort of stopped. Damage was done afterwards as well. Well done to two of the Death Flamingo. That's a shock for Hijinx. That battling knockout takes Mingo to the top of the standings, while Hijinx is in need of a rapid turnaround heading into their next fight against the third in table, Cassius. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. Can Hijinx make up for that random breakdown in the last fight here against Cassius? Cassius very sturdily built, it's got that front hinge flipper. I'm not too sure how effective that's going to be against Hijinx because Hijinx is invertible and they seem to be, to seem to be struggling to get underneath Hijinx. Hijinx is spinning though, not really causing much damage. It's much more maneuverable than it was in the last fight though, have you noticed? It's not trudging around so much and it's capable of getting up to great speeds. Oh, something's come off there and it came off of Hijinx! Have they caused more damage to themselves there? I don't think it's come off the spinner because the spinner's not unbalanced. Or oh, actually, is it? You can hear a weird clicking sound and if it's catching on the floor, that could be serious damage there done by itself to itself. And Cassius using good control and good aggression here to expose that high ground clearance at the back of Hijinx. Hijinx of course seeded 13th for this series. We expected a lot from them because they've how destructive that weapon of theirs really is, but no major damage has been done in this heat thus far. We saw a tear off a couple of wings in the last fight, but that was about it. Hijinx has once again stopped now. Are they okay? Yes, they are. Oh, for a minute, I thought they were done for again. After that random breakdown in the last fight, now doing some damage to Cassius. A little bit of side panel came flying off there. So that the judges will definitely take note of that. Going for the pit release button. The pit button hasn't gone down, but the klaxon has sounded, so I'm guessing the mechanism's lowered. It's just once again the actual pit piece hasn't dropped. There it goes, and oh, oh, oh. Hijinx very nearly caught out by it there. Goodness me. Oh, and again, nearly throwing themselves down the pit. Is it me? This cash is looking a little bit lopsided at the back there. There must have been some more damage under the chassis than I realised with that spinner of Hijinx. 
But Cassius now getting underneath Hijinx and pushing them around the arena. Can they get them down the pit? No, Hijinx. Is their spinner still working? Yes, he's spinning up the speed well. Slamming into the side wall. That was very bad control. If it goes to the judges, I'm not really sure what way the judges are going to go here. Because Cassius is certainly taking damage in this battle, but Hijinx has been terribly controlled. And hasn't been very aggressive. And it's been driven into the side wall here by Cassius. And is, Hij is Hijinx dead again here? I think it is! That's the second time in this heat they've been pushed into the side wall and stopped moving. And time is ticking down on them here. And Cassius about to cause another upset. Oh, what a shame for Hijinx. Oh, that is such a shame. They tried so valiantly in this battle, but again they've broken down. And Cassius collect the W and a three Six. points for a KO victory. What a performance, what a machine. Hijinx will be disappointed. Hijinx starting strong, getting several big hits in on to Cassius. Cassius, though, using good control throughout. Took some damage, though, along the way. Look at the back as well. Very lopsided. Hijinx nearly went down the pit twice in this fight. Cassius unable to get underneath Hijinx. Taking advantage of that high ground clearance before then slamming it towards the side wall. And I think something must have come loose there. And Cassius got the three points. Well done to them. Confirmation that after a second consecutive knockout, Hijinx cannot qualify for the next round. With one seed out, let's move on to our next fight between the Wide Boy Mingo and the fourth seed's Atlas. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. So believe it or not, two of the Deflamingo actually have the most points out of these two. They got three points for their KO victory against Hijinx earlier on. Atlas, meanwhile, has two points for winning that very close decision against Cassius. The first fight of this heat. Very good battle that one was. Two of the Deflamingo will try and bring those axes down, I'm sure, to do damage to the tracks of Atlas. Atlas, meanwhile, it will be bringing in that lifting scoop to try and topple two of the Deflamingo up and over. Can two of the Deflamingo take advantage of the scoop not being lowered down? Using those wedges to good effect, bringing in those axes, not really causing much damage with them, it must be said. A little bit of a rivalry here. Atlas, of course, representing RWA, which, of course, is made by some guy called Anderson9132. I've never heard of him. The pit button's pressed, and the klaxon has sounded, but once again, the pit piece has yet to fall. But the klaxon did sound, so it is a loose panel. As I was saying, Atlas representing RWA made by a guy called Anderson9132. Never really heard of him. I'm sure he's not really done much. Two of the Deflamingo, of course, representing Sam Elliott 64 from the Robocast. So a little bit of a rivalry here. A little bit of a fun, playful bandit. There's a bit of damage there under Mingo, as you can see. A bit of pink Lego on the arena floor. I was wondering if that's going to get stuck underneath Atlas, actually. Atlas has got a very low ground cruise, don't forget. Nope, able to get away from it, so it is okay. One of the wings of Mingo is up in the air. Now it flops back down again. What are those wings? What are they meant to do exactly? <laughs> well, nonetheless, it's a very fun design and a very fun robot and a very popular robot as well, actually. They've got a big fan club out there. Atlas pinning them against the side wall, though. But again, that bucket scoop not managing to lift them up into the air properly. Keeps overbalancing. Trundling along with those tracks. They're very grippy tracks, those. Which gives them a better traction against most robots they come against. As you can see, quite easily outpushing two headed Deflamingo in this fight. This one could well go to the judges again. If Atlas wins this one, they'll have four points from a judge decision. Mingo would have five and almost be guaranteed a spot in the top 16. Although, there's still a couple of other fights to go, don't forget. Now, this is a better attack from Atlas, managing to shove two headed Deflamingo into the side. Well, what is two headed Deflamingo doing? You're not going to get anywhere hitting our arena doors, lads. <laughs> What on earth are they doing? Atlas trying to pluck them up into the air and topple them over, but not managing to do so. And again, nearly overbalancing. Two of the Deflamingo now trundling backwards, or trying to. Is two of the Deflamingo okay here? It's struggling to move. Well, Atlas definitely the more mobile of these two at the moment, but two of the Deflamingo is showing some more movement now, being pushed against the side wall by Atlas 
And quite close to that pit panel. And don't forget, the pit button was pressed and the klaxon did sound. So if two and a different finger goes too close to that pit, it could well drop down on them like that. And they're on the verge of the pit. Can they hold on for six seconds? Six. Or will they go, go down? They do with four seconds to spare. <laughs> Goodness me. Oh, that was close. But Atlas secure themselves. Three points. Oh, that was a good close fight. Again, Atlas. Lucky, really, if you ask me. Able to push two of the Death Flamingo back and using their lifting scoop for good attacks throughout the whole fight. But two of the Death Flamingo so well controlled and very aggressive throughout with those weapons. It was all even Stevens for me up until this point here. This is where it sort of turned for Atlas's favour. Two of the Death Flamingo after that attack had control problems. And it was only a matter of time before Atlas pushed them down the pit. That win in the dying seconds of the match launches Atlas to the top of the standings and guaranteed to advance into the round of 16, leaving Cassius and Mingo to fight it out for that final position. Before that though, Hijinx has one last chance to win back some pride against the already through Atlas. Can they get revenge on their international loss? Robot ears, stand by. 3, 2, 1, activate. So now it's time to see the seeds try and slaughter each other. Hijinx using an interesting tactic, they're using their rear wedge instead of their spinner. I guess that's a good way of keeping Atlas at bay while they let the spinner spin up to speed. But Atlas has that bucket scoop which can easily deflect that bar spinner of theirs. And these two don't forget fought in the international special earlier this year. The second one of course and Atlas beat Hijinx along the way to winning that tournament. Hence why it's seeded fourth. And they did it by flipping Hijinx over and they've got a hold of Hijinx here. But Hijinx able to get away, and a good attack there by Hijinx, good charge by them. Can they bring that spinner in and do damage to the tracks? They weren't able to in the international special, but they might be able to here. Atlas, of course, with that bucket scoop can deflect those hits, unless they get around the side. But Hijinx can't seem to get to those tracks. Oh, very nearly did there though, goodness me. And Atlas was a little bit lucky, they didn't hit them there actually. But look how well controlled Atlas is, managing to get that bucket scoop facing hijinks at all times and once again getting that lifting scoop underneath and plucking hijinks up into the air can they flip them up and over they very nearly did there goodness me this is a really good battle here this is hijinks best performance i'd say so far in this heat okay they cause some damage oh to do it and they've taken a track off and the number four seeds are all of a sudden stumbling Hijinx, I must mention by the way, Hijinx can't get through to the top 16 at this point. Even if they win by a KO, they'll have only amassed 3 points, so they are out as of now. This is just consolation prizes. They've done more damage to themselves there, to be honest. Oh, no, Atlas, Atlas have beat themselves on their own track. Can they get away? This is the first time we've ever really seen Atlas struggle this much. Even in the last two fights, they were still winning towards the end. But here now, Hijinx finally showing them what can be done. It's just a shame that Hijinx are out at this point. It really is a shame that Hijinx are finished because they're doing so well now out of nowhere. But it's too little too late. But at least they can get some consolation points. Oh, what a shame. Atlas trundling along. <laughs> They've got absolutely no control left. And now caught on the inner spikes. <laughs> Hijinx has bits falling off of it as well. This could still well go to the judges, though. I don't really think it's going to be that difficult for them to decide who's won this one. <laughs> Atlas now going for the pit release button as sort of one last act of defiance. Trying to maybe use that bucket scoop to get Hijinx up and over again. Oh dear, more damage being done to Hijinx. They're doing more damage to themselves now than they are Atlas. Bit of a glass cannon perhaps. <laughs> well, it was a heck of a fight nonetheless. And one hell of a final performance from Hijinx this series. We're into the final six seconds of this one. So it is going to go to the judges. Fair play to Atlas for not being KO'd in that fight Jeez. despite the damage caused. I think it's a pretty obvious winner for me. Let's see what the judges say. Atlas certainly started the stronger in that battle, managing to get underneath hijinks and lift them up against the arena side wall. Nearly got them over there and here again, using that bucket scoop well. 
I actually thought they had hijinks at this point, but hijinks were able to escape. And then one very well placed attack there took off one of Atlas's tracks. And from that point forwards, it was hijinks' fight for me. For me, this is an easy one for the judges. But what a fight overall. Has Atlas done enough to win the heat? Let's find out. And the winner by split decision is. Hijinks. As Hijinx ends its disappointing campaign on a win, we move on to our final fight of the night between Cassius and Mingo. Will it be the front hinge flipper to become the fourth qualifier in the round of 16, or will it be the furious pecking machine of Mingo? Let's find out. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. So the final battle of this heat sees Cassius versus two-headed death flamingo, two very differently designed machines. Now, if my calculations are correct, Cassius is currently on four points, two of the Flamingo on three points. So it's all to play for here. The winner of this battle will go on to the top 16 with Atlas, who just scored six points total. So they are definitely the whole way through. Cassius finally getting a flip in on two of the Flamingo, and two of the Flamingo now pieces falling off the robot as it self rises. And two out of Deflamingo, that will definitely count against him. And this one does go to the judges. Cassius has that big flipper, don't forget. That was a very good attack there by Cassius. Will that be enough to cement them a place in the top 16? Only time will tell. Two out of Deflamingo, though, don't count them out yet. They've got good pushing power, good control, good driving. They need to win this battle. Whoever wins this fight will join Atlas in the top 16. Along with all the other great robots that we've seen make it through thus far. Reigning champions, Panic Attack have, don't forget. Bricker Brother, the only robot so far to score a full nine points. Can't forget about them. And plenty of other great machines like White Hole, the very destructive machine. So this is everything to play for in this battle. Will they, who will join all those other great machines between these two? Is Cassius okay? It seems to have stopped and stopped dead in its tracks. Oh, a little bit of movement there. Was that enough to class his full mobility? I think it is now, definitely. Using good control, good aggression as well to push back against you to the Flamingo there. Oh, damage has been done to Cassius now. One of those front wedges has just pried off one of the side panels. <laughs> well, one of the side wedges anyway. And Cassius is definitely having control issues here. They keep stopping and going, stopping and going. And whilst those heads are two of the Death Flamingo don't really do much damage, they do rack up aggression points, which is, of course, a very important thing. You need to rack up as many points as you can in all the criteria. Doing some damage there to the top of Cassius, or is it? I don't think it is really, is it? It's just... You <laughs> think it loves the love taps? Oh, brilliant. But two out of Death Flamingo for me, definitely the more aggressive and controlled machine between these two as this battle trudges on. Cassius really are struggling to move here. And the most mobile machine is definitely two out of Death Flamingo and the judges will definitely take note of that. Is Cassius okay or is it dead? They seem to have stopped once again in their tracks. Can they keep going? They've moved again there. Is that enough to prove they're mobile? That certainly is. So they've managed to stay in it for the moment. Two of the Death Flamingo is shedding bits of armor all over the arena. Both robots have taken damage. But for me, it's more of a question of who's been the most mobile robot throughout. That has definitely been two of the Death Flamingo. What was the more important thing, though? The damage done to Mingo or the mobility from Mingo? We're in the final two seconds, so it is going to go to another so judge's decision. They've been very busy tonight. I'm not too sure who's won this one. Let's take a look at the highlights and find out. Cassius certainly started the stronger in that battle, getting underneath two of the Flamingo there, and then also able to get underneath them here, push them back against the arena sidewall, and flip them up and over. That was a very effective flip, and of course, two of the Flamingo suffered a lot of damage, but then two of the Flamingo started coming back, using those axes all over Cassius. I'm wondering if those axes managed to do enough damage to score something to come loose, because they lost a lot of mobility towards the end. More damage done there as well. And two out of the Death definitely finished as the aggressor. What a fight. What a decision this is going to be. And the winner by unanimous decision is... Mingo. And with that close judge's decision, Mingo takes the remaining place to progress into our knockout stages and brings an end to proceedings tonight. 
We've had a hard-fought night of fights tonight as the fourth seed Atlas topped the group despite losing their unbeaten record, while the unorthodox Mingo flew through their opponents to advance too. That's all we have time for tonight, but tune in next time for the final heat of Series 2 when the second seed's Duck takes centre stage alongside the 15th seed's Block Block Dougal. For now though, I've been your host David of Smeg, and we'll see you in the next one.